yeah, I don't know. You know, our, so we're in the middle of our season. We're in Puerto Rico and we're ready to compete against a couple teams, uh, charging into postseason, feeling like we're a much better team than I thought we were going to be, to be completely honest. And then, you know, we get the phone call from administration that we've uh, need to find a flight home. And, I, you know, immediately was like, what are you talking about? I thought they were just going to do containment all the while we're, you know, looking at, you know, maybe busing to Minneapolis rather than flying and thinking that postseason was still on. And about, you know, as, as quickly as that ran down, was that two Thursdays ago, it went from get home and we're still looking at buses to travel to Big Tens and to three hours later, essentially, the season's canceled. Um, you need to come home and the whole world is going into lockdown and quarantine. And, that was a really tough, just obviously a tough moment where actually we were just about to go start a team building zipline trip uh, out in Puerto Rico and I had to call a team together and basically kind of give them the news. And that was pretty devastating, you know, for, for everyone, you know, obviously the seniors um, being their last year, but I think it's overlooked that, you know, in the college world, you only get one of, you only have four years to compete. And so one of four years is lost for everyone, potentially. And uh, that's just a, that's a really hard thing to swallow. And uh, I think that everyone got hit with it a little bit differently. Um, myself included, right? So it just, it, it was a really tough moment. Um, and so now we've just been trying to, you know, keep everyone engaged and figure out what the next steps are. And um, looking, obviously as a coach, looking to next year and trying to figure out when our freshmen are going to come in and still figuring out eligibility potential for our seniors and that's going to be kind of decided on shortly here in the next 24 to 48 hours so i guess that's where we're at in a holding pattern like everyone else uh wondering if football is going to happen in the fall or are we going to get right back to things as they were three weeks from now which i think is highly doubtful but um certainly that's the range of things <laughs> anywhere from three weeks from now we'll return to normal to through the fall and potentially into October, but that would be that would be a scary situation if that's what happened. Knowing that football is such a driver for this whole NCAA athletics thing, and that we've got you know some guys that had a, a chance, not not a, an outside chance, but still a chance, and you know Alex Diab is already qualified to the USA Championships, which is technically fifty percent of the Olympic qualification period uh, 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 trials process. Um, it's 50% and then they weight the actual Olympic trials is 50% for your Olympic team, you know, birth. Um, that's coming up here in the next, or that was supposed to be coming up here in the next, what now, seven weeks, eight weeks. So, um, you know, it's, that's, that's still hanging, I think, hanging out there. Uh, USA Gymnastics must figure out what they're going to do, I think, with the timelines of their major events. But the Olympic, the IOC finally came out and said they are going to do Olympics, like until so summer of 2021, you know, as, as devastating as that is, because as an Olympic athlete, as an Olympic coach, um, you know, your, your plan is etched with such intricate detail, um, certainly as you get closer to the trials process, you know, and so if you were a guy in the mix, you know, you've got every day matters, every day matters. And so all of a sudden that, that unbelievable, meticulous thoughtful plan is kind of thrown out the window. Now you've got an extra year, you worry about health and, you know, how do you keep your body, you know, going for another year in our crazy sport at the same time for our guys, uh, with outside chances. Um, you know, Michael Fletcher was, was, I think making a case for himself to make the national team, which is top 15 athletes in the country last year in the USA championships where he tore his ACL on his 11th of 12th events. So that was pretty devastating. Um, but he is, starting to come back and looking pretty darn good now. So this extra year actually helps him, I think, in, in an incredible way. It gives him a timeline that still might work for Tokyo. Whereas if you were someone who already looked really strong and, you know, almost a lock, as they would say, which no one is ever a lock, but, you know, some of your some of your more um, veteran guys, I think that's it's really troubling because you're in the mix, you're peaking at the right time, and now everything's been backed up a year. But it was the right thing they had to do um, because of how training regiments have been so heavily impacted, um, and you got guys who can't work out, you know, and, and, you know, if you, if you run track, that's not a problem. You can sprint down your, your street maybe, but you know, the, the specialty that gymnasts need and the, and the, and the, the maintenance that you have to, to keep up with the sport of gymnastics, you can't just do pushups and think that's the same thing as vaulting or doing a swinging pommel horse or doing a high bar routine. Um, you have to do gymnastics and 
none of my members are able to do gymnastics right now like I think every other gymnast in the country almost. I know a few guys have been able to sneak into their gyms by themselves because their dads own the gym or something like that, but you've really messed up the ability to keep consistent training for the vast majority, and I, I think that that is a huge reason why the IOC had to, had to delay the Olympics because you just, it's, it's, it, it, it's a mess. It's a mess right now. So um, really tough to swallow, but I think the right move to make. Sky Richard from the News that uh, just with the fact that you guys were maybe in Puerto Rico and you know, getting ready to compete that weekend, did that make things head a little harder just because maybe say you weren't, you know, back home in Champaign and maybe they had to deal with trying to find a, a flight home and was that just oh, that complicate the, the situation? Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, hundred percent. I you know, like we we were literally literally on, on a mountaintop. You know, like we were in the, this, the, you know, in the most beautiful part of Puerto Rico on a mountaintop about ready to go down the world's third longest zip line and do some culture team building stuff. And, you know, competed a meet in two days, um, you know, about to charge into postseason in this tropical paradise, you know, and our guys don't get to do that. You know, you look at the schools that have gymnastics. It's like, do you want to be compete in an indoor arena in a really cold place or a colder place? You know, like we don't get a chance to do this very often. So that I think the guys were just super high spirits following the news reports and the media and they were obviously talking about it constantly uh, on our drive after practice to this to this zip line course and then you know I just to, to be as high as you could possibly be and then it, it's like the drive back down the mountain it was like physically and metaphorically every, what everyone was going through it was just crushing you know you got guys just tearing up that thought they had you know you, you I don't think people understand how in, in football, you know, a win against another Big Ten rival is an epic part of your season. For, for these individual sports, it's really all about postseason. And we were just about to start that. And so not having that, that's kind of what it's all about. Like, you don't cite my titles records when you, you know, cite my, you know, you tell I'm a four-time national champion. I'm a 13-time All-American. That's all, you know, that's all postseason. So, to not have that part of the season and actually have it stripped away from you two weeks is just crushing. And then, you know, obviously on top of the fact that we were having a really great time and really enjoying ourselves as a team and, and kind of bonding in a, in a really incredible place to go and then be like, we have to find a flight tomorrow and leave. And you're going to go home and you're going to quarantine at your parents' house by yourself for two months, potentially. It was just, I don't think you can be that high and then be just, boom, spearheaded that low. And I just, it's, it's tough. I think, I think for that reason, our guys are in an extra tough place mentally. It's challenging for them. And we had a, we had a, uh, you know, a teleconference with the whole squad yesterday. And you can tell guys are putting on a face, but some guys are struggling. It's tough being home with parents, I think, when you're a college student athlete, but certainly amidst these circumstances. So I, we're trying to keep touch and do video conferences one-on-one -on -one daily with a couple of them and trying to connect as best we can through, through, Technology. Justin, this is Gavin Good with 247 Sports. Um, you obviously talk about how it was a, just a crushing experience, but as, as a coach, have you had moments like this where you've had to deliver a blow like that to, you know, a team? And obviously, it was a, in a very unique environment as well. Yeah, it was weird. You know, we're all saddled up. You know, we're all strapped up in our our harnesses and guys are about, you know, I, I think like, you know, everyone was kind of giddy. We're about to do this crazy line across this ravine that's over a mile long. So everyone's heart was racing and going crazy as it was. And then all of a sudden there's this like crushing blow. It, to me, it honestly, it felt like last big tens or last NCAAs after taking a hard loss. I mean, you have to, you know, we trained our entire year to get ready for this moment to be prepared to do our best. And we fall short. You know, we've been second in the big 10 conference, I think seven out of nine times the last eight years, uh, eight out of nine years, eight out of nine times the last nine years. Like that's devastating. <laughs> second place is a tough pill to swallow. And so it, it kind of reminded me of every second place finish at big 10 championships. It was just like we trained all year. We knew we had a chance and we didn't get it done except for this time. It was out of our control. It was out of our hands. And I think that makes, that made it more confusing and just, that much harder to swallow like before it was like we should have been there we had the chance we could have done it and we had mistakes when that when, when you when you have 
that ability to, when it's on you, when you have that ownership, you can control that. But this is totally out of our control and, and therefore I think was just a little different and a little harder to swallow because it was just taken from us. It had nothing to do with what we did. We were, we were getting ready, we felt good, and then it just disappeared. It's just gone. End of the season. Hey, Justin, it's Scott again. Um, you mentioned maybe the season, you know, having gone a little better than you expected. What, what do you feel like was behind, you know, maybe that, that, that good start and you know, maybe the, that good place you were in with postseason, you know, right around the corner? Well, you know, we, 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 we had a lot of injuries. Um, it doesn't look like a lot, but, when, you know, so we had Michael Fletcher and Clay Mason Stevens out from ACL Terrace for the year. Um, you know, they're two of our full-ride scholarship guys. So, you know, so we only have 6.3 scholarships. So we had, you know, we had a third of our scholarships sitting on the sidelines. So when you look at it that way, it's a tremendous impact to number of routines on the floor and, and, and our high-level routine. So, you know, it was just kind of an uphill battle, we thought, the whole, the whole year. And then we just had some guys really step up. We brought in another international kid, Josh Cook, from, from Wales. And then actually his teammate, Hamish Carter, who came in halfway through last year, was really... Honestly, you know, Hamish was kind of our, our backbone this year in a lot of ways. Um, there's a lot of guys doing a lot of great things, right? But I just feel like he deserves to be thrown a bone. You know, he didn't get any national accolades because he had one rough meet where he hurt his ankle, and so that really dropped his rankings. But he was really our workhorse for our program, doing all around almost every meet for the first two months. Um, and really a big reason we, we beat a lot of opponents that I didn't think we were going to beat when you look at the routines and the, the start values and the makeup of the programs. So um, we really, really impressed with how he was able to handle a, a pretty grueling two months, you know, beginning of the season. And it kept us in contention for a regular season championship and looking like we might be in the mix for this, you know, big 10 tournament and everything else. Justin, it's Gavin again. You, you mentioned how, um, you know, the Olympic postponement might actually be like a, a bit of a help to a guy like uh, Fletcher. Um, how much of it is it? Does it hurt Alex Diab at all, or how, how do you think it will affect him? And and well, uh, a little bit the timeline for for Fletcher maybe with these new with the postponement. Yeah, actually, I, I think it helps Alex as well. You know, Alex, you know, two time U.S. national champion on rings now, but his other events, you know, weren't really quite where they needed to be. You know, with with the Olympic team this year and the individual spots, not really an option anymore because you had to qualify through the World Cup circuit for Alex his only chance to make this Olympic team is to make a team spot it's a four man team so when you look at that you've got four spots on this Olympic team and you have to place you know three guys up on each event um, and four well and four, four guys up on in prelims four, you have four guys up in prelims and three of those scores count so you don't have to have four guys that first day on every event but if you're the selection committee you 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 want four guys right like just in case someone has a really bad routine, and oh my god, you jeopardize not qualifying to the Olympic team finals, right? So Alex doesn't do the all-around. He only does four events. And so we were pushing to get him back in the all-around after the season. He had a pretty bad leg injury. He had to sit and do nothing for quite some time after his uh, after his graduation. So he was able to come back, obviously stay strong, and win the rings title here at the Winter Cup. But his other events weren't quite there. His floor and vault could be amazing, but they just weren't quite there. And so this, this gives him the time to get his high bar, uh, floor and vault where they need to be, but then also get back in the all around. He's never going to be world class on Tom or parallel bars, but he could at least do them, which in my opinion gives the Olymp Olympic selection committee, um, a little bit more of a sigh of relief if they were to think about putting him on because he can contribute so much to our team on his rings and floor and vault. Um, and by our team, I mean, you know, our, our Olympic team potentially, um, but he's got to, it can't be, his other events can't be so bad that it jeopardizes their comfort of putting him on for all the help he can do on his other star events. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. This, this yeah. gives him the time to, to, to get those where they need to be. Hey, Justin, it's Peyton Washington with the last tour tonight. Um, you mentioned your home life, obviously, in a joking manner, but how is you know, okay. your family doing? I mean, that, I, I mean, not to pry, but how is your family doing? I, I hope everything's well, because I think this affects everyone, you know, both athletically as well as home. So, uh, you know, how's the wife and the, the children? I think, you know, it's, I, I had my Skype call with my team or my Zoom call. I don't know, 
platform we're using. We're using a lot of different ones here and there, but um, it, it's really hard. Um, you know, I've been kind of put. So my wife works part time at the Career Counseling Center. They're, they're doing all remote work, but she has like actual legit work and meetings and conferences and employer relations calls that she has to be on, um, even as part time. So you know, she works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Our daycare is not open. We're, we're not essential workers. So like, I'm just I'm just full throttle dad. And I've never been close to that with a coach's schedule. And I have to be, you know, perfectly honest. That's maybe the hardest job I've ever had to do. Um, in conjunction with, like, when do I do my work? Like, you know, we have three kids. We have a seven-year-old, a four-year-old, and a six-month-old who's teething, by the way. Cue that up, right? Perfect timing. And it's like, uh, I don't know how, like, even carving out time for this interview, you know, she's in there. She's not working today, so it's fine. But just the Monday through Wednesday, it's tough. If this is how things continue for the next three, four weeks, it's going to be a real challenge when I, you know, because the work gets backed up and recruiting picks up and got to start making calls and truly trying to connect and engage with my team again as we get back into potentially training again. Um, it's going to be a real challenge because, again, daycare is closed. So and we, have, you know, we have three kids, <laughs> three young kids that, that are not self-sufficient by any means. So. It's been a challenge. Justin, obviously, you know, as you alluded to earlier, the NCAA seems to be close to reaching a consensus about what they're going to do with eligibility. Um, you know, I know men's gymnastics is one of those sports where there's very few scholarships. Um, just how much of a difficult situation is it for for, you know, guys on your team, you as a coach, uh, to just be kind of waiting on this and wondering about what's going to happen and, you know, how possible is it for guys to possibly come back if they are granted to, granted another year? Yeah, I mean, you've got so many different lenses you have to look at it from. You've got, you know, the you've got Title IX numbers. That all of a sudden, what if you had, you know, football had, you know, 40 graduating seniors or something, and then it was a low year for women's sports, all of a sudden your Title IX numbers are completely out of whack. So, like, what do you do with that? Um, yeah, scholarship is an issue. You're going to have to waive the scholarship totals if, if, if you're going to allow just a blanket, you know, seniors can stick around if they want. Um, so, you know, what do you do with the scholarship, you know, allotment? Um, you know, and then obviously roster cap things, and then everyone has to be in school technically, right? So, like, what if you got a guy that graduated in pre-med and his next job, you know, his next stop is med school. You know, you can't just like start a year of med school randomly all of a sudden. So what is he going to do? Just take 12 worthless credits, you know, uh, for a year just because he has to be enrolled in school, you know, to fulfill the, the NCAA eligibility requirements. So there's a, there's a lot of layers to this that really make it, I think, a challenge. Um, you know, they're looking at things that possibly even running spring and winter sports just in the fall. I mean, if you think about it, they don't share facilities. Most of them don't. Like, we wouldn't share a facility with football or anything. So could you could you just finish your season in the fall, and so it's just one semester. But then all these things are going to cost everyone a lot of money, you know, amidst a financial and economic <laughs> catastrophe, right? So um, I think that's really scary, too. And then we just don't really know how it's all going to look. Um, if everything gets back to normal here in three weeks, it's going to be still going to be bad. If everything doesn't get back to normal till late summer, or God forbid, through the fall, I don't know. I mean, the amount of money that's going to be lost with football and everything else, that's the engine that drives this whole thing. I don't know what that would look like. So, you know, before you start signing on to, you know, what could be a couple extra million of do millions of dollars so that you keep your seniors around, they can finish that year as we're entering the next six months that could look and, and be very different financially. I, I think that's a, they're just, in a in an easy just one you know easy topical way, it's great to say yeah everyone's gonna get an extra year perfect but that's the right thing to do. What are the repercussions of doing that? And that's what ads and commissioners are looking at, and and that scares me too, right? You know, is um, any pressure on the system? I'm going to be candid here. You know, men's gymnastics has been losing programs left and right for 30 years. Any extra pressure uh, financially or Title IX number wise on on any system is not good for men's gymnastics or men's Olympic sports in general. So all of this worries me, and there's really nothing I can do about it. So um, the higher ups will make a decision, and we'll we'll make the best of it either way we can. Justin, 
Have you talked with some of your seniors at all in a preliminary sense, or do you know sort of what's going through their heads right now? Yeah. Um, you know, we were, this was obviously, I think, a, a thing that very quickly came up in everyone's mind. So I actually remember on the flight right before we're taking off in Puerto Rico, my admin, um, Jason Leonard, was like, hey, I need, a, I need an idea of how many, how many of your seniors would stay back if, were, if they were allowed. Um, and so I took a poll, and even answering that question caused quite a few tears in a lot of guys' eyes because just thinking about that decision and what, what that means. I mean, these guys were set and ready to move off to, into the world, some of them. They had jobs lined up, you know, and everything was supposed to just go according to plan. I finish out my senior year, I get my All-American, did my job, and, and then I move on and I become a doctor, move on, be, do this and do that. And now it's like, can I... Will I, should I put my entire life on hold to end my career the way I saw it ending? And I just, how do you weigh that? How do you, you know, like that, I just, that's a really, really hard decision. And so even just answering, would you come back? That, that, that's not as, again, it's easy on top of these, yeah, hell yeah, I want my, you know, my fourth of four years of eligibility, but am I willing, can I give up? You know, like life, you know, college, the student athlete experience is all about preparing our athletes, student athletes for the rest of their life, you know, a career. And, and now we're kind of asking them to put that on the back burner, potentially to stick around for a whole nother year um, to do something they love while jeopardizing their future and their career. I just, it's not an easy yes or no question. And so um, I think we've got a few, it was easy for, for Michael Paradise, it was easy. He's sticking around and getting a master's. You know, I just graduated in aerospace engineering with like a Three nine something GPA. I mean, the kid's amazing academically and a great athlete for us. But he was already locked in for grad program, so he was going to be here in classes. His was an easy yes, but that wasn't the case for everyone else. And so it's, it's been a real challenge for them figuring out and navigating what they want to do versus what they feel like they should do. Just one last question, um, kind of about Olympic prep, because I don't really know what guys like Dia um, might be going through. What 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 are they? What sort of the run up for for them? And just you know, maybe for him and so he's graduated now. But like, what's the run up for trials normally, and how might it be changed a little bit by the postponement? Yeah. So um, you know, we had uh, so he was at Winter Cup, which was one of the main ways to qualify to the USA National Championships, which I, as I said earlier, it's fifty percent pass of the results they use for selecting the Olympic team. The other half comes directly from the Olympic trials. So the um, U.S. championships were coming up here in May, and then um, the Olympic trials were supposed to be in June, uh, uh, one month apart, you know, and, and so, um, and you only make the Olympic trials from USA championships if you make the, na the, the national team, which is the top 15 guys. So that, you know, that was com that's coming up right around the corner. Um, which again, he's one of the few who, whose dad owns a gym up in Chicago. So they, you know, I'm getting videos from him and his brother going into the gym, by, you know, together and working out. They're one of the few that are able to do that, though. You know, the rest of the world, their parents probably, my parents didn't own a gym. If this happened to me, I'd just be doing handstand push-ups in my living room, right? You know, you, you, you can't go train. So um, it's been a real challenge. Um, so that's, I mean, there's your, there's your normal process. Now I have no idea. Uh, and actually, we have a board call for USA Gymnastics coming up, I think. And to discuss, we've got to get a new set of Olympic selection procedures out, uh, make it public, and, you know, disperse that. Because now everyone, you know, you're in the hunt. Like, well, how do I make it now? You know, what, you know the Olympic, Olympic selection procedures are, are mandated to be put out years in advance of the Olympics. So you know exactly what it looks like and the timeline and what you're supposed to do. Now that's all been tossed up in the air. and um, you know, we got to figure it out.